Commonwealth versus Wilkes raises one of the more common questions that will come up with any kind of theft by deception case. Um, in, in theft by deception, the defendant, in order to be convicted, has to have at the time that he receives the goods or at the time uh, that he refuses to remit payment, he has to, he has to at that point intend to deceive his, his um, counterpart in the transaction. So <clears throat> let's say that you know, I show up at your house and, and I say that I'm, I'm going to sell you a box full of gold. And, and the, you, know, I, I, you, you put in your order, yes, I would love a box full of gold. And, and I send the order off. And it, at, at every point, I plan to send you a box full of gold. And, and you, I take the money from you, and then it turns out that we just don't have any more gold, that we ran out of gold, and that, uh, and that the company went bankrupt. So I can't return your money, and I can't send you the gold that you agreed to buy from me. Have I, have I committed uh, theft by deception? No, absolutely not. I've taken your money in exchange for a promise to send you a box full of gold that, that seemingly and all the evidence would suggest that I plan to send. How would we go about showing that, that I was guilty of theft by deception uh, for selling you a box of gold that I never planned to deliver and take your money for? Examples would be, uh, let's say that I never had a factory or I never had a plant that was shipping out boxes of gold. Let's say that there are other people um, you know, from the past before the company goes belly up uh, that, that I have promised to send gold to who have given me money and I don't send them out. We could look for evidence, we need to look for evidence in other words, that suggests at the time of the transaction that there was an intent not to, not to pay up on the obligation. So in this case, um, the, um, the, um, the defendant had received this oil and had planned to pay and it, and it submitted the check and then, and then does a stop payment on the check. So has the person who is now put the stop payment on the check, was the person's intent when they received the oil to not pay the debt? Or has the person now improperly refused uh, and deceived the person in, in sending the oil? Uh, you know, has at the time of the contract, has there been, was there a, an intent not to pay on this obligation? And no, this is a legitimate dispute uh, about about whether the goods were conforming and what the remedy should be, in order to have in order to have theft by deception, at the time you receive the money or the goods, uh, your plan has to be that I'm not going to pay for these things or I'm going to take payment and not deliver the goods, depending on which side of the transaction you're on. So in Commonwealth versus Wilkes, we see a case in which there is no evidence that the um, that the parties to this particular contract uh, had or the, the defendant the one of the parties to this contract had any intention of not paying it was only when the goods in his view didn't conform and there was a legitimate dispute about this that was uh, the point at which he decided that he was not going to pay as he had originally promised because he claims he didn't get what he was promised in the goods so key thing to show, to show the crime of theft by deception, when you take the goods or when you take the cash, the, the intent at that moment has to be uh, that I'm not going to deliver on my end of the transaction. And if your intent at that moment is not that you, that you won't deliver, then you're not guilty of this particular crime. Now, remember, we can't read minds. So we have to do things like look at, look at the surrounding circumstances. And one of the surrounding circumstances the court looked at in the Wilkes case was when the defendant wrote the check for the $18,000 for the oil, he had enough money in the bank to cover it, indicating that, that he intended to actually pay for the oil. And at the moment he took the oil, this was not an intent, his intent was not to Welch on that obligation. Now it's entirely possible that 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 that, that was his intent, 
Uh, it was entirely possible this whole thing is an elaborate ruse. But the evidence does not lead naturally to that conclusion. And what we're looking at in any of these criminal cases, when we're trying to read someone's mind, is we're trying to get inside of their head from the objective circumstances. And the objective circumstances uh, were that this guy was a dealer in oil, uh, that, he, um, that he had, in fact, written a check that was good at the time it was written. He, he stopped payment. And we can see that there is a legitimate basis for the dispute. So it doesn't seem like his intent going into this arrangement was to welch on his on his bet or welch on his obligation.